What is German but disguises as Scottish? Emily Valken here and in this video I would like to talk about Schottis or Reilander. Actually talking about names, I guess I'm not the only one who has been confused about Reilander and Schottis and is there a difference and what is it and so on. So I'm gonna try to answer this question right now. Basically I have found three different names for the same thing. The first name is Schottis, also called Schottisch or hot this sometimes and those are my blue dots so the tunes I have found with this name are in the blue dots and they are found mostly in Sweden a bit in the Swedish speaking part of Finland or Swedish influenced areas of Finland and also in Denmark that's for shot this then there is the other name Rheinlander my orange dots there and this one is mostly in Norway and a bit as well in the Swedish regions with Norwegian influence and a bit in the south as well. This word is the most confusing one because you have tons of different spellings of it. So you have Rheinlander, which is the kind of standard Norwegian one, but you have also Rheinlander, Rinlander. Ringlander, you have lots of different versions, so don't be too confused, it's just the same thing. Be careful about one thing though. In Denmark, what is called Reilender or Reilende Polka is actually a form of Polka, not Schottis. So there is uh, something that can be confusing there. Also, I'm sorry for my Danish, I say it the Swedish way, I'm sorry. Um, apparently, there is an exception of on the island of Les, uh, where actually if you say Reilander, it means Schottis, it means Reilander and not Polka. But to be safe, I would say in Denmark, you say Schottis. So, no problem. And while I was researching for those names, I discovered a third word, totally different from all those, that is used in the Finnish-speaking part of Finland. My yellow dot's there, and this word is Jenka. So, don't be confused if you meet a weird spelling of Reilander, or if you meet Schottis, or if you meet Janka, it is more or less the same thing. Of course, there are some local variations, and maybe also different variations of style, like more or less like this, or maybe the dance is a little bit different, but more or less, it's the same dance. I'm gonna say Schottis in this video, because that's what I'm used to, because my tradition is mostly Swedish. If we look a little bit at the history of the Schottis, we discover that actually the name Rheinländer is way more correct than Schottis because Rheinländer means that it comes from the Rhine and that is correct. The dance is very probably coming from the region around Hamburg which is the Rhine area in Germany. Actually there is an old Swedish name that is Lübeckare and this means the city of Lübeck in Germany that is not far from Hamburg. So the dance is from there and Schottis is actually a confusing word because it means Scottish but Schottis has nothing Scottish at all, it's not from Scotland. So there is a confusion there, there has been a confusion somewhere. Uh, the name has stayed, I'm going on saying Schottis because that's what I'm used to say but if you want to be really precise, Rheinlander is actually more precise than Schottis, more correct. How to play Schottis? I'm glad you ask. Basically, the main thing that you have to focus on when you start playing shot this is the bounce. Let me explain. You have your beat, and then you have on every half beat a bounce. And you see that in my head, in my shoulders. I'm making it very much there. My beat is on my foot. And I have the half beat. So I suggest that for getting this bouncing effect, you dance a little bit. Even if you're not a dancer, playing helps dancing and dancing helps playing. So just giving it a go and trying to understand this bounce stuff in your body can help you a lot. So I suggest that you put on some shortest music 
and you dance along or you don't really have to dance you walking is a good idea but you can also do it on the spot but try to have this bounce thing basically it's done from the knees so you don't lock your knees but you release them and then you can do that easily you can practice it if you have a gymnastic ball it's very good to sit on the gymnastic ball and then feel this bouncing stuff it's a very good way to learn it i also like metal imagery as you know and one of the ideas I have in my mind when I play shot this, when I think about it, is that I am a pretty fat old man that is very joyful, probably a bit drunk. So when he dances, he's, he's like, <laughs> and he's a bit like that, you know? Actually, there is an even more <laughs> stupid picture, but it works for me very well. It is to think about Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Hey ho, hey ho. It's home for Mark we go. It might sound extremely stupid to think about that for playing Scandi folk music, but it helps because this dwarfy way of moving with your hands doing like this, your arms, and you're kind of happy and singing and you're swinging with your song, with your music. This is exactly what we are after. So be a dwarf for a second so you can have this feeling. If you like more romantic images, you can also think that you are in a Scandinavian forest with, you know, thick moss on the, on the ground. So when you walk, your feet are like... It's a bit the same feeling as well. So pick up the image you want. I suggest that you give a try to all of them. When you practice your stomping, be very careful about one thing. You don't want to stomp every half beat. You don't want to stomp... Because then you're gonna have a very stressful feeling. If you stomp every half beat, you're gonna like rush the feeling in a way. So really, you stomp one of two half beats. This is really, really important. So practice stomping. It's hard to get it consciously well done, but really practice your stomping and do not do every half beat because you're gonna have a very stressful feeling and shot this is really more relaxed and laid back. What I highly recommend you to do is to listen to different types of shot this, different styles of playing. So try to have different instruments, a violin, an accordion, a cello, a guitar, a singer, and try to have also different styles of playing. So some people that are playing extremely jumpy and some people that are playing more flat. So then you get a better picture of what shotis can sound like, like how bouncy and or how little bouncy it can be, like all the spectrum there is. So, playing it, take your fiddle or other instrument, I'm sorry I'm focusing mostly on fiddles as usual, bone instruments, and what you can do is just to listen to your recordings and first you're gonna just feel it in your body and when you feel for it you just play a drone along and you try to with your bowing hand, do a little bit of this bounce as well. So basically you're playing a bit of a banana in the air. It's gonna sound very ugly, I'm just telling you. So maybe you have a tune that is in G and you just play. So it can be very boring to play, but it's a super good exercise to play along some music. Of course you can change chords and so on if you want to. But drones are very good because you can focus on the bow. And try to really listen and to not start playing. That's exactly what we don't want. We really want. Also, to have a bouncy effect, it's super duper important that you're keeping your bow short. If you start doing can't be vertical. If you are horizontal, you can't be vertical. That's just simple. So keep your bow short. Actually, very often when I play shot this, I use maximum 10 centimeters of my bow. So you can really maybe put like two markings on your bow and try to stay in there. So no matter if you play accompaniment, drone, or just exercise, or the melody, try to keep it very short. It's the shortness that is gonna make it bouncy. Not only, but also. Also, if you're playing an accompaniment instrument, such as guitar or even fiddle, but you want to play accompaniment, you can play just on the beat, the chords, but there is also the possibility to play on the backbeat. This is very probably not 
academic, like not traditional really, but it's played a lot nowadays in the Swedish folk scene. I think they like when it sounds a bit American, in a way. Uh, so for example, if I have my beat on my feet, along the whole tune, but just in some parts, especially if you have an arrangement and something, it can be a really good way to give a lot of swing to your dancers and it's a super cool thing to do. Now that you have your bouncing feeling there, you can dig into something a little more precise and more nerdy, which is the two different types of shot disses. Those two types are kind of excluding one another. I don't know if there is any tune that is actually switching from one to the other, I don't think so. I think they belong to one or the other. The first type of shot this I'm gonna talk about is actually the least common one. It's 10 to maybe 20% of the Swedish shot disses, but it's the easiest one, that's why I take it first. It is the straight shot this, or basically shot this with a straight under division. If this is your shot this, those are your beat. Those are your half beats, so you're bouncing. And then you separate every half beat in two. And so on. This is, for example, the shot is from Kalix that I already gave you in a previous video some months ago. Dum, da, da, dum, da, da, dum, da, 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 half beats, da, da, da. So this is my under division. So the straight shot this is not very difficult to play because it's just simple rhythm, it's straight, it's easy. The problem is that it can get really boring and it's very easy to lose the bounce if you're not used to it. If you lose the bounce and you start playing it boring, flat, that is what is going to happen. This is going to be really, really boring if you play like this and very hard to dance. So here the bowing is especially important and remember to keep your bow short. way more energetic. So practice that and as usual recording yourself and listening is a good idea to know if what you think you're playing is actually how it sounds like because very often it's not exactly what we think. The other type of shot is that you will meet in Sweden and other Scandinavian countries which is actually more common than the first one is the triplet shot this which means basically a shot is with a triplet under division you could call it triul shottis. It doesn't exist as a word, but it would make sense in Swedish. Or I've also heard the word shuffle. Basically, it is that you have your beats, once again, your half beats, that's your bouncing, and then you're gonna cut those half beats into three. And so on. And this is, for example, the heridal shottis that I also gave you some month ago. So, dum pa dum pa dum dum pa dum pa dum pa dum dum da dum da dum da dum dum. One two three, one two three, one two three, one two three, and this one two three is those under divisions. We are never gonna play those triplets, those one two three, in the melody. They are never showing up in the melody, but they are there as a canvas, as a skeleton, for the music that we're gonna play. In the triplet shot this is, one of the main rhythms you're gonna meet is this one. Long, short, long, short, long, short, long. The difficulty with this rhythm is that you will have a tendency probably to have problems with your bow. If you separate every note and you try to play like the heaviness on the long ones, long, short, long, short, long, you will have probably the problem that you end up like this. And no more bow left. So it's 
quite important to practice to really make the long one heavy and the second one quick and light. <laughs> careful there because there are several traps in which you can fell. The first one is to start doing putting the accent on the short one, which is not what you want. What you want is the accent on the long one. Long, short, long, short, long. Not long, short, long, short, long, short, long. That's very weird. Can be an effect, but not for the practice. That's for later. The other trap in which you can fell, fall is that you're gonna flatten the rhythm. So you're gonna start playing and it's gonna end up flat. This is very very common because when confronted to a new thing we have a tendency to do very little of it because it's not comfortable, it's new. So try to really keep this rhythm. I highly recommend you to uh, record yourself so you hear if you are actually doing or if you are starting to flatten the rhythm. What you can think of when you try to play that is to actually play only the long one and the short one is that you just come back to the frog. Something like just that you let the bow on the string in between. at all. Um, you will just not have usually just this kind of stuff for a long long time in the short list, but it can happen in some melodies. But very often there is one bowing pattern that you're gonna meet. I think it's a very counterintuitive bowing pattern, but I've seen and heard it many times, so I'm just giving it to you. When you have this long short long short long a uh, little while, you can bind together the short note with the next long one. So this is gonna give something like Kind of. It's a bit weird, but it's traditional and with some practice it works. The other rhythm you're gonna meet also very often uh, with the triplet chortices is very similar to the first one, but there's a little difference. It is long, short, short, long. Long, short, short, long. Long, short, short, long. So the first half is the same as the first rhythm, the second half is the exact opposite. So this rhythm is actually easier than the first one, because yeah, the first part of it is the same that we just had before, long, short, but then you have the short, long. And this second short note is really easy to make with a good accent, because it's down bow and it's short, and then you have a long note. So if you just play the short long, it's way easier to have the accent on the short one than to play. This is harder. This is easier. And when you put one after the other, so the whole long, short, short long, have this backbeat feeling that can match your accompaniment maybe or not depending on what you want as an effect. The danger with the triplet shotis is to speed up the tempo because you have more notes in the in under division so there is a very driving forward feeling and you will very probably have a tendency to rush a little bit. That's very common especially if you have a natural tendency to rush. I'm one of these people so I know the problem. So you can use the idea of the horse that I already used in the slang pole scale, that you let it run, but you hold the reins quite well. You hold it solidly and you don't let it go quicker and quicker. So let it have its drive forward, but don't let it accelerate. It's a hard thing. Metronome is your friend. So that's about the shot this. I know it's not a lot about technique, there is not much technique to practice for playing shot this good. Shot this is way more about feeling and this bouncy stuff than really little techniques that you can repeat. It's really more feeling, listening to different types and trying to get it in your body and in your bow. 
practicing a feeling in music is way harder than practicing technique. That's why Shot This is more tricky than it seems to be from the first look. So this is the end of this video. I want to thank some people very especially. Castine, Eva, Lauke and Nicoline because they helped me a lot with sorting out those names and how is shot is called, where and what are the exceptions and what are the names and so on. So thank you very much people. I also want to thank my patrons on Patreon. It's really helping that I have patrons supporting me, even if it's just a tiny bit, it's still very helpful. What you don't know is that today the camera is sitting on my new tripod. So this is only the second video that I do with a tripod. Before that I was using chairs and boxes to put the camera in the right place. And with the Patreon money I was able to buy the tripod and it's such a, an improvement <laughs> for preparing the videos. I don't have to carry all the chairs of the house to this place to record. I can put stuff like more precisely and have an image that is much better. So that's one of the improvements I've been able to do thanks to the Patreon. So if you like these videos, if you would like them to continue, if you would like to support what I'm doing and also other stuff that I do because I'm also making music and teaching and composing and all that, please have a look at my Patreon page. I'll put the link on the screen at the end of the video as usual. Also, as usual, all your interactions here on the internet are helping me a lot. And by interactions, I mean, of course, likes and subscribes and following actions. That's amazing. And I really thank you because I have new subscribers almost every day. It's really heartwarming. But what I like even more than that, what is even more precious to me is to have direct human contact with you people. So when you write me something, so don't be shy. I am always very happy to get some words. It can be just two words telling me what you think about what I do. It can be questions, it can be encouragements, it can be critics, whatever. I really, really like to have your words and to feel that I'm interacting with human beings and not just with a beast called the internet that has no face. So all your help, all your support is really, really appreciated. Thanks a lot, people. I hope you will have a lot of fun playing Shop This, and I will see you in the next video. Hey, Doa!